Hey guys, what's up? Swabby here, just bringing you a quick update on my Shatter Strike Spellblade build. Um, I've been getting a lot of comments regarding D Thane's Bloody Nib. A lot of people are commenting about how the Bloody Nib is the definitive best in slot uh, relic for this particular skill or build or whatever you want to call it, and you know how the reason why nobody uses the set is because this is just better and my build sucks and whatever else uh you know i hear your comments i read you loud and clear i appreciate your comments because it gives me an opportunity to address them in videos such as this one the reality is bloody nib is not better and the reason why is because you do not get the set bonus you see how the set bonus is highlighted in green highlighted in green highlighted in green you take this off not highlighted in green you lose the set bonus if you do not have the relic equipped you cannot turn this into a bloody nib and maintain the set bonus now duck stacking is better than regen oh is it okay let's just take a look at that so here we go we have my completely naked character with just my set bonus on i have no idols i have no other gear other than just my base set and my health regen is at 118, right? I have one piece. This is a bottom of the basement tier one roll for health regen per second. And this is a bottom of the basement tier one roll for dexterity. So this is exact science. One point of dexterity versus two points of health regen, okay? Here's my base. No additional scaling, right? We already determined we have ridiculous scaling potential with the increased health regen, but you get the point. Point is base tooltip damage for just the set 31,980. Okay? Remember that number 31,980. We go ahead and we put on our decks. One point of decks brings 31,980. To 32 284 okay so you know that's about a 300 point increase per dex let's go ahead and put on our health regen two health regen now first thing we're going to notice base health regen was 118 two health regen is not actually two health regen it's actually six now that's because there's already some built-in increased health regen on this right i have no additional scaling right i have no additional scaling at all but because of the additional increased health regen here and because of uh, whatever's going on in the background two health regen actually winds up being six so with that six regen we go from 31 or 39 180 to 32 328 so interestingly enough we actually have higher damage with the regen than we do with the dex Imagine that, and that's before we even scale it. So now that we have our gear re-equipped, we now have 317 health regen, right? So that two is actually 10 because of the additional scaling, right? So now we have a base damage of 72,337, one dex, 72815. So yes, we did gain some extra damage with the dex cuz interestingly enough that's just the way dex scales at higher levels, but you have uh let's see 72815 minus uh 72337. So that's a difference of 478. And then with health regen 73 126 minus 72, 337. That's 789. So we've, uh, this two health regen just turned into almost 800 damage. Damage is really inconsistent in general, but you see it peaks out around 75 or 750,000. Which is, you know, it's pretty good. Ooh, 850, that was a nice one. But this is Dex, right? Um, this is the worst part is waiting for the downtime on this. So yeah, so we got a peak of about eight, 
800,000 damage, right? And then we'll just switch on the health regen gloves, which see what that does. 860. So we're already first hit considerably higher damage with the health regen. Uh, 800,000 again. 850,000, 840,000, 820,000. Now, let's take a look at why people are looking at the Bloody Nib, okay? So the Bloody Nib, people say deck stacking, deck stacking, deck stacking. This gives you up to, and I stress up to, because you only have a 20% chance of rolling eight dexterity. You have an 80% chance of rolling less than eight dexterity. But I digress, we'll just call it eight dexterity and assume you get a max roll Bloody Nib, right? But the Bloody Nib has uh, LP, okay, at level 80, which means you're extremely unlikely to get a 2 LP Nib. Let's assume you get lucky and get a 1 LP Nib. What are you going to add to this that's going to potentially make it better? More decks? So if I get 16 decks from the Bloody Nib times 500 that's 8,000 damage right how do I get 8,000 damage out of a pair of gloves well let's just take a look at that so here we go uh, these this is a bad example because it does have three decks on it but let's see so we've already determined that uh, 10 health regen was about 800 damage so two points just got me 10 if I need 100 that means I just need 20 points right 20 points of health regen this isn't even 20 this is 19 let's see what this does 307, 407. Hey, look, I just found 100 and I didn't even use 20 health. But that's 20 health regen, right? So there's my difference right there, and then I still get the decks on top of it. The reality is, you can have the best of both worlds. They're not mutually exclusive. If you deck stack and you don't do the health regen, then you do not gain advantage of health regen other than just for health. Whereas if you use the set bonus, you can actually gain the advantage of the health bonus with health regen plus the dex bonus. Why would you only use one when you can get the best of both worlds? So that's the absolute maximum damage you're gonna squeak out of a bloody knit. Now, yes, you do get some ward per second, which is nice, I will concede that. Yes, you do get plus one to shatter strike, which is largely irrelevant because I already have plus two on the body and the plus two on the body is enough to get your cold damage to four out of four. And there's not really a whole lot else in the tree that you'd really want other than maybe reducing the mana cost just to, just to save a little bit of mana. But, um, you know, that's neither here nor there. It's not necessary. It's just kind of like a luxury and it doesn't affect your damage at all. As far as mana regen, yes, that is nice as well. Um, the glaringly obvious problem with the build if you don't get lucky and get a very good mana regen roll on your belt is you do run out of mana pretty quickly in arena situations when you have waves of monsters that never stop. However, um, as long as you are careful and you run around and you know train mobs into bottlenecks to clean up your uh, shatter strikes, and don't try to shatter strike every single mob individually. Uh, you shouldn't really be running out of MP. That shouldn't really be too much of a problem. And 15 to 25 crit multi, that's meh. Um, fine. That, that's that's okay. I will say it's better than not having it, but, I mean, it's not earth-shatteringly different damage. Uh, we'll just call it... This is good. I'm, I'm just going to say it's a good piece if you don't have the set. It's a good piece. At the end of the day, you can see with your own eyes, both tooltip and target dummy damage do increase with health regen instead of dex, which proves essentially beyond any shadow of a doubt, the set bonus is definitively and objectively just better than the bloody knit. It's also significantly easier to put together the set than it is to get yourself a bloody nib, much less a bloody nib with LP. A well-rolled bloody nib is, you know, potentially dozens of times that you're going to have to kill the boss. And with LP, you're talking about even more. Yes, you might get lucky and get it on your first try. Or you could take a hundred tries. You never know. That's the thing with RNG.
Now that we've taken a little bit deeper of a dive into the Shattered Lance set and discussed what makes the set so strong, I did want to mention I do plan on putting out an updated build guide video in which I will go a little bit more into detail on each individual affix, as well as show some footage of higher corruption levels and boss fights and maybe some dungeons and uh, things of that nature. Also, I did have an enlightening conversation with another individual who's very familiar with the mechanics of this game, and he had mentioned some things about idols that I think may be able to be revised a bit to not only beef up our survivability, but also add some pretty cool layers to defense. With that said, uh, that will be coming in a future video. I do thank you for watching, and I look forward to your comments below, and thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.